tell us a bit more about how you you got your foot in in the door of the VFX industry. Oh, I was super lucky. Yeah, super super lucky. Yeah, I think I think like part of it, part of it is definitely skill. Okay. Part of it is timing and 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 luck. And you know, there is that saying, you know, it's not always what you know, it's who you know, and and stuff like that. And that was definitely kind of half the case for me. Um, my sister met was at a friend's party and met this guy called Michael Elder. Shout yeah. out Michael Elder. He's an animator at Frame Store. Yeah. And and yeah, just like they got they got talking and she was like, Oh, that's my brother studying that at uni, you know, and basically connected me and him together. I emailed him and he was like, Yeah, sure, like, you know, perhaps I can get you like a chat with somebody here. And I, and he did. Hi, and welcome to the VFX Artists Podcast. On today's episode, I have Rory Bryant, an on-set data capture supervisor at MPC London. During today's discussion, I'm looking to find out more about Rory's journey and progression, which began as a runner at Frames of London, to becoming an on-set data capture supervisor at MPC London. I hope you enjoyed the show. Hey, yeah, there we go. There we go. Finally, dude. Technology. Yeah, impossible Shit. to get a hold of. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Try tell me about it. I mean, I have the same feeling myself about you know. Yeah. Just general. General life. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know how you do I'm it. Here. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. It's been it's been months in the working to try to get yeah, you. Yeah, man. On. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like. Uh, you know, I think I think something like this is pretty important. Yeah. You know, to hear from lots of people's voices throughout the mm-hmm. industry and stuff, and get their opinions and their yeah. get a sort of insights into what they do and try and inspire yeah. people. And then, yeah, yeah, man, definitely, yeah. yeah. Make it, I, hopefully, make it like less of a a wall or a barrier. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Because yeah, you, yeah, so. usually people or students for example they don't they don't have an, a clue i mean i personally like i didn't really know about vfx until i don't know if you remember we had an industry day at ravensbourne i think yeah before during our second year and then we had mpc mm. and cinesi and the mill came in and then that's when yeah. i actually learned about vfx and then that's literally changed that's my what pers- to yeah 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 um, it's important though is it's you know reaching out to people reaching out mm. to sort of like the, the the new generation and like the future yeah. is like super important because yeah you know as great as as great as people are that we work with mm-hmm. you know having new blood in and having new ideas yeah. and fresh ideas and stuff it's yeah it's um really important and exciting and yeah. you know gives us all a kick up the ass as well yeah you yeah. know <laughs> i think we could all like <laughs> get to that stage where we're like oh this is fine you know yeah yeah definitely <laughs> but we want but yeah. it to be great we don't want it to be fun yeah of course but yeah thanks yeah. a lot for your time and um yeah as as usual welcome to the oh, show yeah. hold on <laughs> sorry i gotta i gotta change mugs oh what was, what was that you're using work work that was, a, that was a that was a vintage frame store mug oh no yeah, way i don't wear, <laughs> I don't wear there anymore <laughs> don't do that <laughs> i'll do that yeah cut that out no, i'm joking yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thanks a lot for your time and yeah i welcome to the show um thanks yeah, yeah man thanks for um, having me thanks for thinking yeah. of me it's really cool no like yeah we've 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 seen ourselves quite for um quite a bit because i wanted to work in your, in your industry and yeah i came to you and you, you gave me some advice and we had a yeah, chat yeah. so I was, I've always been like I've always wanted to to work in on data capture because I mean firstly because I, I love photography and all things camera and then yeah, yeah. I love traveling and just being on set as well is just fascinating to me so I've yeah. always wanted to do it it's and then the perfect job then yeah yeah <laughs> but then I, little... I think it, it was the bad t- bad timing because at the time I had my wife was pregnant and then I was mm. yeah becoming yeah, some things family. are a little bit more important. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, so I'm yeah. kind of lucky in that, in that, in that respect to a certain extent. You know, mm. I don't have 
any of that those sort of like yeah. really hard tie downs obviously you have family you have girlfriend mm -hmm. and stuff but yeah. um you don't have a dependent well okay. i don't have a dependent so yeah yes yeah that's the difference cool. that's a big difference as well yeah of course yeah 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 let's talk more about that but before that can you just yeah introduce yourself for us and then tell us more about what you do hi kofi uh, my name is Rory Bryans and uh, I'm a visual effects on set supervisor at the Moving Picture Company, or MPC for short. Yeah, awesome man. <laughs> but yeah, can you tell us, yeah, can you explain more about what um, Answer Data Capture is? Sure. Um, so, obviously the movie is filmed, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the big crew gets put together. You have the director, the producers, the DOP, the actors, camera team. Um, <clears throat> and to successfully integrate the visual effects, the post-production, mm -hmm. there's um, tons and tons of reference that we need to gather on set, right? Mm -hmm. So photography reference, camera notes, uh, lighting reference, 3D scans of the environment so we can place creatures and stuff in the right place and make sure and you know touch up any of the sets and stuff like that yeah. um so it's the visual effects on set team's responsibility to gather all the relevant data um to help smooth that process in post right so bridge yeah. the gap between what's being filmed and then the artist back in the studio at the vendor um but yeah basically bridge that gap give them all the information they need because they're not there right so when they get turnover from from the client a lot of the time you know if we weren't there we weren't getting all this stuff it would just be a 2d plate yeah. right it would just be whatever was shot through camera and they have no context they don't know if you know uh where the lights were they wouldn't know where the camera was in relationship to x y and z um the height the tilt focal length they wouldn't know any of that stuff i mean now you get some of that in in metadata and stuff but still that that's an extra step, right? You're, you're now adding, having to go into yeah. the metadata and, 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 and pulling out data that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, that's that's kind of what we do. We go we go on, we integrate with um, with the rest of the team on set and yeah. um, gather that data. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, just tell us a bit more about how you, you got your foot in, in the door of the VFX industry. Oh, I was super lucky. Yeah. Super, super lucky. Yeah, I think, I think like, part of it part of it is definitely skill okay. part of it is timing and 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 luck and you know there is that saying you know it's not always what you know it's who you know and, and stuff like that and that was definitely kind of half the case for me um my sister met was at a friend's party and met this guy called michael elder shout yeah. out michael elder he's an animator at frame store yeah. and and yeah just like they got they got talking and she was like oh that's my brother studying that at uni you know and basically connected me and him together i emailed him and he was like yeah sure like you know perhaps i can get you like a chat with somebody here and I, and he did you know and uh and so i went in and i showed my i think i was in my second year at ravensbourne and i and i showed my showreel and my um uh, life drawing and stuff like that and they seemed to like it. They had nothing lime, but they were like, oh, there might be like uh, this, uh, I think somebody was like, going on maternity leave or somebody was leaving or something. And it was like, there might be a job coming up in four weeks on the weekends, would you be up for it? And I was like, that's perfect. Cause you know, I'm still at uni. So ideally I wouldn't be working during the week. It'd be weekends. And then pretty much yeah. like on, on the money, like four weeks later on the button, they said, yeah, um, this job's come up, do you want it? And annoyingly, they asked me to start the weekend of Reading Festival, and I had tickets to Reading Festival. Blink-182 were playing, and I was really gutted. I missed it. <laughs> I took the job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of how I got in. I started off as a, a receptionist mm -hmm. at Frame Store on the weekends. So it was sort of like a runner slash receptionist. Yeah. Um, which was great. Uh, got my foot in the door, you know, started talking to people here and there, but, you know, there were there weren't you know there's not many people in the weekends obviously at, at times there are you know um in any sort of industry in creative industry when you're when you're when you're trying to do the final push there's mm -hmm. there's some people come in the weekends to sort of like yeah. get the thing over the line and stuff um but yeah um 
I didn't really see too many people, but made some some good relationships, especially with the other runners that were in. And then as yeah. soon as I got a bit more time um, to myself, so like, you know, freed up a bit of time during the week when, you know, I could fit more sort of, um, uh, what'd you call it? Um, training. I don't know what I mean. Yeah, training and stuff, but later I could like fit, I could fit in more, I had more opportunity to work during the week. Okay. And so I picked up some more, some more shifts. That's it, shifts. Are you sure? um, I picked up some more, I picked up some more shifts during the week. And then that's when I started sort of like talking to more people and um, put myself out there a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I got in. Yeah. Do, do I, I don't know if I remember right, but I think Graham still had a, was it a motion capture department? I mm-hmm. think you, you, were you in, in, or were you trying to get into that department? Yeah, I, I, I tried to. Um, mm-hmm. So it's a bit, a bit of a tricky one. So um, they they were full basically. They didn't have okay. any any space for me. Yeah. But um, when I was when I was still a runner, mm-hmm. they they absorbed some of um, equipment from the photography the photography department. There was a motion capture department and then photography yeah. department. And they um, they absorbed some of their kit, well all their kit. Yeah. Um, and there was quite a lot of staff, and you know. It wasn't necessarily like catalogued in the best way or organized in the best way so they reached out to my manager um and said you know do you have anybody on the team that knows anything about cameras anybody that's kind of interested in in in, in cameras and stuff yeah and she was like yeah i think i know the person she knew that i'd studied photography and then yeah. you know i was obviously studying animation at the time mm-hmm. um and she obviously entrusted me as well she put me forward for it and i was like yeah definitely so i spent like the next week or two weeks just down in the basement by myself yeah with like music on just cataloging all this stuff like yeah this is this is good this is maybe this is mm. throwaway pile and i basically yeah. and then you know folded all the blue screens and all this stuff yeah. um with with some help of, of uh, my fellow runners mm-hmm. um and yeah and then they came down and they had a look and they, they were really happy with what i did and then from that moment on they were they would always ask for me which yeah. is great. So they would, yeah. you know, if they had any clients coming in, or any like mocap sessions or whatever. Mm. Then they they would uh, if, like get me in. I'd go in like after work, and they'd teach me some stuff. Or yeah. like you know, come in on days when I'm not working, they teach me some stuff. Um, yeah. Really took me under their wing. Um, yeah. yeah, it was cool. And so when they absorbed all that photography stuff, they basically became um, like the onset team mm-hmm. rather than just the motion capture team. Mm-hmm. So they eventually rebranded as the Capture Lab, which I, that's what I think they're known as as, as today as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that's when I sort of picked up a lot of a lot of the skills that I use today, and what I, you know what got me to where I am today, like mm-hmm. you know photogrammetry and and HDRIs with cameras, yeah. and you know to a certain extent motion capture, but I haven't touched that in a long time. Um, yeah. yeah, a bunch of other stuff like survey and, and yeah. stuff like that, and they they also gave me my first opportunity to go on set. Mm-hmm. Uh, first jobs were uh, 47 Ronin okay. and closed circuit, which okay, is yeah. a, um, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but that's cool. We got to go to Wembley Stadium at mm-hmm. nighttime, yeah. empty. And I just remember like walking out into Wembley Stadium, like mm-hmm. no football, football stadium. Yeah. Like, wow, this is nuts. Yeah. yeah. I've made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah and so when I was like trying to when I was trying to push to get into that department, mm-hmm. they're they're really good. They're really like honest with me and stuff. And they're like, look, you know, we love having you on board, and if we could, like, we would we we would have you here full time. But yeah, it just wasn't wasn't going to happen. And it was around the time where I I finished uni, and I'd been training in other departments. I'd been training in Match Move, um, and and they were pretty much offering me a job. Okay, and so it was kind of like. Do I stay as a runner but still have opportunities in this department like whenever I wanted, or do I move into match move and, and get, you know, a real job? Yeah. Um and then um like every now and then when I could, when I was available, go on set. So that's basically what I did. I took the match move job because I thought okay. it'd be really good to sort of like further my career and also, you know, <clears throat> get get a um get some shows under my belt and then just get more experience and like perhaps like the onset stuff was fun for a while and maybe but maybe i'll like you know go this way maybe go into yeah. lighting or go into another department yeah. i went to match move and i had a really good time had a great team it was awesome i was there yeah. for like a couple of years and okay. um but and, and every now and then i still went back on set i just missed it like i couldn't yeah i, could, yeah. I, could, I couldn't get away from it like yeah you know 
So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually, just, yeah, I didn't know you, you, you spent a few years in Match Group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. I worked, but, on, worked on a bunch of things at Frame Store, um, yeah. some fun projects, but man, the, the team there were, they were awesome. Yeah. Really enjoyed my time. It was yeah. a very, very tough decision actually to, okay. to, to leave. Um, right. But I, yeah, I made the right decision. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So yeah, fast forward that and then you moved on to MPC. So, um, yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, yeah, how, how did it start at MPC? What, what level or how, yeah, how did you, how did it start? Um, so like I said, I was, I was in match move and I mm -hmm. carried on with the, all the onset stuff. And, um, a friend of mine who had worked at frame store in the onset team, the capture lab there, he, um, he had gone freelance mm -hmm. and in between freelance gigs, he actually picked up uh, a short term contract at MPC. Okay. the um, data capture team there yeah and he got along with them really well i think he knew he knew a couple of people through friends anyway or through his girlfriend or something mm -hmm. and um when he was leaving they were like well we need to replace him and said do you know anybody that might be interested mm -hmm. and he recommended he recommended me actually mm -hmm. you know, i think he i think we may have gone for lunch first okay and then he was just like do you want me to recommend you and i was like sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> sounds good because i mean yeah. like i said that's I kept wanting to go back on set, right? I was oh, in match yeah. move and I was still having a great time there. And yeah. like, I, like I owe those guys and like frame store a lot, mm -hmm. you know, because they gave me that opportunity and they saw that stuff in me. But like, I was like, hell yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. I want to be on set all the time. Yeah. And, um, and yes, yeah, so I was like, yeah, go for it. They put me forward, went for the interview and mm -hmm. yeah, luckily I got the job. I mean, I don't know who I, I was up against. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, sure. yeah. Yeah. But I managed to get it somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I must have been like the only applicant or something. They're really desperate. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I guess like your favorites and like you said, it's about who you know, I guess. So, it's yeah. timing as well. Yeah. You know, I guess, you yeah. know, for, for me, I wasn't, I wasn't bored or anything at Frame Store, mm. but there was definitely something. Yeah. It's like, I almost didn't know something was missing until I was offered it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and yeah, I'm really glad I did it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take those chances. Like, you know, I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, really there's nothing wrong with it uh, i think it's you know quite easy to sort of stay where you are but like mm -hmm. i think if you get if you get offered something it's it's yeah you should probably take it yeah you never know it may never get offered again yeah of course yeah so yeah yeah so you, i've been that... i think i've been at frame store for like four years by that point i was oh, like yeah sure i quite like yeah. i quite like it here like i yeah. know everybody everybody knows me this is great <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yeah but yeah yeah but then it's, yeah Sometimes you get too too comfortable when you stay in one place for too long. Exactly. So, yeah, you need to you need to have that fire mm. beneath yeah. you or behind you or whatever the saying is. You know, yeah. it's like make you worry a bit, be the new guy again, and sort of have to find your find your yeah. way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So um, with data capture, is are there levels of? I mean, of, of course, there are levels of um, what do you call it? Uh, Seniority. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. seniority. So, you, did you have to start off as a junior, or did were you like a mid um, artist at that point? To be honest, they, I don't know what level I started mm. at. Okay. Um, I don't think it said on my on my mm. contract. Yeah. Um, I think it was kind of. Um, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if there mm. there were sort of um, yeah. those but bracket then, those brackets then, but like yeah. I definitely went in as a sort of like, you know mid uh, junior mid kind mm. of level you know yeah. like i'd been on set i'd kind of done everything that mm. they brought up in the in the, um, the yeah. interview P apart from i hadn't actually done any field of light work like any total station survey at that point oh, yeah, okay. mm. um i'd i'd used one but i hadn't never done it if yeah. that makes sense like i've never yeah, done so, it yeah. like practically on, yeah. on, on a set yeah. um and so that was the one thing and i was really honest with them in the interview i was like mm. i've used it in match move mm. and i know what press buttons on the screen yeah. when we've been in like the mo in the mocap studio but i haven't yeah. yes yeah. i've never like yeah actually practically done it and had to like find a little yeah. on set where i'm mm -hmm. not in front of camp not in the way or nobody's yeah. nobody's eye line not blocking a light and yeah. be able to see everything else around the set to be like ding, yeah. ding, 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 and pick all these pick, pick all these points out so yeah yeah but they but they're like that's fine we can teach you and they did yeah oh yeah sure <laughs> you've frozen up a bit but hopefully catches up I got a bad signal. Yeah, that's okay. We Sorry, can... I got a bad signal. That's okay. We can <laughs> cut around use... it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, you're back. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so, 
there are a lot of challenges and, and responsibilities with working on set. So how do you manage that responsibility? Um, Cause you have the I studio counting on. I, yeah, I don't know how I manage it. I think mm. you just, I think, I think obviously when you start out in a career, right? When you mm-hmm. start out in, in, in the field, you, you, you start with less responsibility. Mm-hmm. And as you grow and as you, as you, as you further your career, you sort of just naturally take on more responsibility. Yeah. And I think that's kind of it. I think when you step back and you look, oh, actually, like, well, I'm responsible for this, this, and this, it's quite a lot. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't always feel like that when you're doing it. Yeah. If that makes sense, like, yeah. you kind of, you, you just have to do it. Mm-hmm. If you if you stop and, and, and think about, about it too much, obviously, yeah. you have to think and plan. But, like, if you stop and think about, like, oh, man, I'm responsible for all this stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing. Like okay. I think you just kind of have to roll, have to roll with it to a certain extent. Yeah. Obviously, you have to be wary of like what you're doing is important, yeah. um, and you know you're representing the company or representing the visual effects team as a whole. Um, yeah. You know, there's lots of responsibility. You know, yeah. talking to clients and building up those relationships and, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think I think being in being in the position for a certain amount of time helps, right? Yeah. And you naturally just take on more responsibility. Yeah. So that, I think that's how you kind of manage it sort of naturally, I guess. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's still points where you're like, you know, where you're like, well, you know, there's still some of those moments where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, that's quite big. Yeah. I think that really the, you know, yeah, one in a million. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then also your job requires you to be on set. And sometimes that's usually out, out of the country for yeah. a long time long of that long periods of time yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm just very Can curious of, yeah i'm just very <laughs> curious yeah i know we've talked about it at the beginning but i'm just curious about how you manage that with being away from the studios and your family as well as i don't know i don't know if anyone's ever asked you about how psychologically how that affects you because i'm sure sometimes it can get lonely or depending on who you're with and who you meet i guess yeah i think it really depends on 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 who you're with mm. um and the career with usually um I, don't, I can't really think of any time that i've gone away and mm. like not liked it or like okay. disliked it yeah. you know mm-hmm. i've had some way it's been like it's all right okay you know but yeah. Yeah, i don't think i've only had any sort of times where i've disliked the crew that i go away with but okay. the way i manage it i mean it's it's what i signed up for at okay, the end yep. of the day you mm-hmm. know and it's part of the job that i really enjoy mm-hmm. i love traveling um first of all i love the work that i do right mm-hmm. and I'll, you know, and I'll just go anywhere where I've got to go to, to do what I do and meet the people that I meet and achieve yeah. what we achieve. Um, and then second of all, I really like traveling. I like experiencing new places, even though a lot of the time, you know, we sort of go there and we don't, we don't have much time off and we don't really get to experience the country that much, like yeah. in terms of, you know, I, I don't go and go see all the sites, yeah. but just being in it and sort of like absorbing things. Yeah, sure. You know, working with local crews and, mm-hmm. and, you know, on your odd day off, you do just go and have a sort of walk around the town that you're staying in and, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, that's definitely, definitely takes mm-hmm. the edge off because, yeah. you know, you're almost distracted. Mm-hmm. I feel, I feel worse for the people here that might be missing me. Right. You yeah, know, of course, may, yeah, yeah. may want me around, may need me to help with something. Yeah. You know, family, yeah. girlfriend and, yeah. and whatever else, because yeah. they're the ones that are stuck with the sort of normal day to day. Not that yeah. it's necessarily boring, but like, you know, it's the day to day. You know, yeah. whatever and then i'm away and obviously i'm really busy yeah um but i'm also distracted but, right yeah. so i don't necessarily necessarily have a lot of time to sort of sit there and think about stuff mm-hmm. obviously i miss everybody when i'm away mm-hmm. i miss my colleagues i miss my family and and, and stuff but mm-hmm. it's like i said just what you what you kind of sign up for mm-hmm. and then when you when you're back it kind of makes things extra special as well yeah yeah, but, yeah, yeah, just take full advantage of when you're back. Yeah, if if, but, you're, if you're back for long enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, so uh, yeah, which countries have you have you been in, and yeah, how? how... Um, yeah, I've been. I've luckily been to like again. I could probably keep saying luckily because mm. I really do feel like it's yeah. it's a really it's quite a niche job to be in mm. and to, to, to be able to do it and do it at a certain level is, is um, yeah, I still think it's really lucky, but yeah. you know, saying that, you know, I've been in this industry like 10 years now and, you know, I've been an NPC for seven years. So yeah. some of it's luck and some of it's hard work. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, no, I've been I've been to tons of places and like places that I'd never probably never have gone to, or at least mm -hmm. not in this time frame. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm not that old. I'm a, I'm only thirty two, and I've mm -hmm. been to a bunch of these places. Yeah. Or work you know and then there's all the places i've been to personally mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean memorable moments probably um i went all over india for the jungle book yeah i was there for about a month okay. um which was really cool we sort of traveled around and sort of trekked through forests and like clambered up waterfalls and yeah. and stuff like that which was really cool yeah um taking lots of um reference uh textures and round shots photogrammetry mm -hmm. and hdris and all kinds of mm -hmm. all that good stuff yeah um because obviously the artists back at npc then along mm -hmm. with you know just their artistic flair yeah. and stuff they 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 that helped sort of yeah inform and uh, the environment builds and stuff like that yeah, for the sure, yeah. Book. yeah. um kenya for for yeah. the lion king Mm. was pretty special we were there for yeah. like five six weeks and that was yeah. that was pretty epic and we had a great team like yeah. it was awesome it was so yeah. much fun um yeah that, that was really cool mm. sort of helicopter look that was kind of like the most helicopter work i'd ever done uh -huh. in one stint yeah and that's like my favorite part of the job is like <laughs> yeah. when you get to do sort of like more extreme stuff mm -hmm. is, is my favorite yeah um then i've been to iceland a couple of times and one okay. time i went and it was just myself yeah. and um this gentleman named thor from a company called um uh true north which is an okay. icelandic sort of film production company and they're great they're awesome mm -hmm. um and so i was paired up with him and we just went out in his his like pickup truck yeah and drove around some of iceland and he yeah. was giving me like history lessons about oh, yeah. the weather and their horses and stuff like that mm. he's he's such an interesting interesting yeah. person like yeah. really kind and really knowledgeable and mm. just like yeah really helped me out yeah. um yeah we ran and just like shot a bunch of reference in sort of ice caves and, and stuff like mm. that which was really fun you know yeah. we'd sort of get there and then i'd i'd be there filming by myself and he would okay. sort of help with bits and bobs but really yeah. was sort of just like my babysitter yeah. um yeah, that that was really fun because mm. it was really cool to sort of like go out on these little excursions, just like the two of us. Because mm. yeah, normally sure, it's like yeah. a, a bit, bit more of a team, and it was yeah. quite fun. It was just us, and um, yeah, yeah, we're like hiking over glac glaciers and and stuff yeah. like that, which I'd never done before. We got on those, oh, one yeah. of those big, those big like super bus jeep things where oh, yeah. they can control the air pressure from inside the cabin, and All right. and like the wheels are just like as tall as I am. <laughs> yeah. it's bonkers, and it's funny because we like hike, hike it across, and he was like, "Oh wait." And this bus came past and he like knows everybody there like All he's right, worked yeah. on his glaciers for like yeah. 20 years 30 yeah. years and he basically yeah. like hitchhiked us a ride on <laughs> he just like pulled them, dragged them down and we just yeah. got on and just like like got a lift which was pretty cool yeah. um and then like i've been to hong kong i went to hong kong for a month which was yeah. pretty sweet i went out mm. again with a really really cool team and we yeah. just that was for godzilla versus king kong and mm -hmm. um yeah it was just a, a good time worked really yeah. hard um the team were nice and then the the client team came out and, and met mm -hmm. us there because they were coming yeah. to shoot plates after that and they, they were really yeah. cool as well yeah. um yeah. yeah and then recently on the job that i'm on now i've been sort of going all over the place so i think mm. on this one i've been iceland again new zealand jordan mm. costa rica three times right a couple of places in the states yeah um yeah it's cool yeah. but then i've been yeah. like places all over all over yeah. europe as well you know it's just yeah like the list is pretty yeah pretty big <laughs> you must be like fully immunized with like all of the, yeah a lot pretty of much. yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much but i still have to like every time i go we have to um just like double check okay yeah like i still you know because it's like when did you have it you yeah know, are you still covered kind of thing yeah sure. and i've got all these different i've got all these different like leaflets and oh, like yeah. forms that have been filled out by different doctors and stuff yeah. and i'm trying to compare them and like match them up <laughs> Dave, i need yeah. to have like some sort of central database yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but usually yeah. when they, usually it's um like i'm i'm about to go to the um namibia on a job mm. and um mm. on saturday and uh mm. yeah i got called up and they're like if you had this i was like yep mm. this yep this yeah. yep all right you don't need to come in i was like brilliant yeah nice. <laughs> <laughs> you need to have more time at home yeah because it is yeah. like you said you know it's the time the time time at home is precious mm -hmm. right and you have to make the most of it and anything yeah. like doing stuff like that obviously it's very important and happy mm -hmm. to do it but it really does, does eat into yeah. your into your day yeah so yeah so you, you you talk about um being with with teams sometimes but, so i'm just wondering do, does the team usually 
start off from NPC or do you assume that team when you when you get to the set? It varies. Okay. You know, it really does vary. Um, and there's pros and cons to both, um, for sure. But um, yeah, so normally on a on a on a you know feature film feature film set, there would be <clears throat> we have our client, our client whether that's you know Disney or Paramount or whatever, Universal. Yes. Um, they will have they would have hired a visual effects uh, supervisor, producer, whole production team, mm -hmm. and then like lead maybe an on set supervisor their side um yeah. and then you know lead data wrangler wrangling assistant and and some pas and witness camera operators and sometimes so that that's the, that's the sort of normal what i'd call the normal setup mm -hmm. and then we embed one maybe two npc people depending on, depending on the size the size yeah. of the project into that team and so we kind of slot in somewhere with, around the sort of wrangler on set supervisor mm -hmm. kind of kind yeah. of position um in terms of sort of like responsibility and stuff and it's it's our job to make sure that the data that everybody's collecting the, the whole team is sort of geared towards npc's needs like yeah. shot the way that the, the our lighting team are expecting the hdris and shot yeah. the textures are shot in controlled lighting setups and making sure we get chrome balls and hdris and the photo booth mm -hmm. all, all that kind of stuff and so yeah, sure. we're, we're there to do technical work and we're also mm -hmm. there to sort of be um I wouldn't say the bridge because the, the communication between NPC and the clients is usually really good, but it's kind of like maybe like a technical bridge between mm -hmm. between like, you know, people that may not necessarily be in those meetings with the client mm -hmm. to be able to say, hey, can we get like one photo of this, please? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of like we're kind of that, that yeah. team. Yeah. Um, and then we have then we have projects um, where the entire team mm -hmm. is NPC or at least sourced by NPC. You know, sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll hire in a couple of freelancers to help out, okay. usually from a sort of our trusted list of freelancers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And and yeah. so those kind of gigs are sort of like maybe smaller, smaller projects that we've been working on um, yeah. that we're maybe we're covering um, just like reshoots or something mm -hmm. or a lot of our sort of bigger environment shoots mm -hmm. like uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong and Lion King and stuff like that. We would take an entire yeah. team of, of, of NPC people usually yeah sure yeah oh nice yeah. okay yeah so um yeah as someone who tends to to recruit others in in your department what do you usually look for or expect from candidates applying to join your your department um i mean experience is great mm. but i think like that sort of overall like connection at the beginning is like quite important so mm -hmm. being able to talk yeah. to the person is is really good and hold like a a pretty mm -hmm. solid conversation with them like I, I like to think the interviews that i conduct are fairly like laid back in a sense because mm -hmm. i kind of want to get to know the person right yeah. i want to know know a little bit about them see how see the way they tick because they have we have to be confident about sending them yeah. away possibly by themselves mm -hmm. to spend two or three months with our clients and and and, and stuff like that so mm -hmm. um that that's the sort of um i guess the um not the main thing but the subconscious thing i kind of mm -hmm. I, I kind of look for and then and then obviously experience is great so mm -hmm. th that comes in two two forms basically you have yeah. the visual effects artist um experience and then you have the onset experience mm -hmm. not everybody needs both of course like it's it's ideally they would have both you know even if it's just a little bit of one and a little bit of the other it's great because you've yeah. had a taste of each one um but then if if it's more your visual effects artist but you want to start going on set mm -hmm. um then that's great because you already have that sort of um the idea you have the 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 the, the visual effects pipeline sort mm -hmm. of always in the yeah. back of your head when you're yeah. doing this stuff when you're doing the work yeah. you're, you're always thinking about how is this going to integrate mm -hmm. um but for those kind of people if they haven't been on set before then i would make sure they had like strong camera knowledge they they know about you know production cinema cameras lenses mm -hmm. distortion uh, uh, and, and all those sort of varying factors within camera yeah. as well as being able to use cameras as well because like you said a lot of our work is photography so yeah. they need to be a pretty comfortable yeah. photographer to be able yeah. to like quickly change settings for mm -hmm. and, and, and the right settings for what yeah. we're trying to capture at the time because you yeah. know it can be quite time mm -hmm. sensitive mm -hmm. and then the on set side if you've got more on set experience again that's great because we don't really have to teach those sort of on set soft skills mm -hmm. you've probably already seen an hdri rig you've probably already seen 
a lidar you've probably already seen this stuff whether you've used it or not mm -hmm. is one thing but as long as you've seen it and you've seen people use it um and then you can always sort of mold and teach the the sort of vfx pipeline side you know we could be like hey this is blah 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 from assets let's chat to them about you know what's the most important thing to get here's yeah. you know marco from environments let's mm -hmm. like let's talk to him about what he's going to need you know and slowly over time it starts like building up their confidence and their knowledge of, mm -hmm. of the vfx pipeline um yeah. so yeah i think they're they're the kind of like three main sort of candidates we get okay you know people with both mm -hmm. vfx artist or yeah. on set yeah so yeah again across all of them they need to have Mm -hmm. good camera knowledge is 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 pretty yeah. key and then communication skills is good yeah yeah sure yeah as well uh, that's great um i'm just curious about um what are what have other people in your position uh, especially as on set data capture supervisors gone on to do after transitioning from their role like maybe leaving or i was like what would i do after this yeah um I th i'm pretty happy at the moment to be honest yeah. like i know i know it's still fairly new i've been kind mm. of doing it anyway yeah. a little bit like i've done yeah. bits and bobs here did some little mm. bits on cats did some stuff on uh sonic yeah you know um sort of additional sort of supervisional mm -hmm. stuff yeah um but now and the project i'm working on at the moment i've been doing it on that as well and mm. now officially doing it yeah i think i'm pretty i'm pretty happy where i am yeah i think you know a lot lots of lots of people that have been in similar positions mm -hmm. can and will go on to like um being overall supervisor client side or, okay. or and, and stuff like that um but really again it really depends on the person depends okay. on the opportunities they they, mm -hmm. they get and stuff like that yeah. but for me i'm 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 really happy in my role and um yeah. Yeah, I, I, just getting more, 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 getting more responsibility and, mm -hmm. and sort of sought after more is kind of my goal. Yeah, you know, yeah. being in demand is always nice. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you come across as um, very happy and like it sounds like everything always goes right, but I'm sure there's there's been there's always been a bad day. Have you? What's, yeah, nah, never. No, no, it's never been a bad day. Right. Yeah, of course there is. Yeah, there's always bad days. There's bad days. There's bad days in all jobs. I mean, that's yeah. why it's called a job and not just like yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you don't you don't always get. And I I I, th I think like I'm really privileged to be in in, in a in an area where I really enjoy my work and mm. I enjoy what I do and I get to have all these like amazing experiences mm. and get paid for it. Mm. You know, it's it, it's pretty cool. Like yeah, obviously yeah, there are tough mm. days. Like yeah. there are you know times where you work you know long hours and stuff mm. like that but you know you mm. you, all, you all sort of club in together and you all sort of stand together in solidarity yeah. and sort of get each other through it and stuff like yeah. that you know and um just like any job mm -hmm. it really is just kind of like any 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 job really yeah what's what's the words that could happen um as a onset data capture would that be like forgetting to, oh we lose the hard drives all like, right all the work goes missing yeah because oh, yeah, okay. like a lot of the stuff that we do you get one chance right so okay yeah of course. whether we're on a like a big trip mm -hmm. big like environment shoot yeah. and you may get like two three days in each location mm -hmm. if if somehow a day, like a, a hard drive goes down or that it gets lost or whatever that's yeah. kind of the worst thing that can happen because mm. you can't go back course, and yeah. there's been a lot of money spent to go there yeah. um yeah. and then same again same again on you know if you're just on a on a set you know if you're pinewood or leaves then mm. again you, you're only going to have the lighting and camera there Mm. for how long they're there for for that yeah. setup so you've got to get it right and yeah. so yeah they're they're the kind of worst things obviously mm. like you know that never happens really mm. i think i've experienced that maybe twice in my mm. entire career or something yeah. like that's happened mm. um because you know you back it up once you back it up again mm. and maybe a third time if you've got another drive you know yeah. you, you try and and, and you spread mm. out you spread the the drives yeah. out it's like when we when we travel we sort of spread them out okay, yeah. as well so you know yeah. if i die <laughs> if i get hit by a bus and the, yeah. and the, and the hard drive explodes <laughs> at least at least the data makes it back <laughs> yeah of course yeah but that's that's quite <laughs> a big responsibility i would have assumed they'd trust that with a, a separate entity or a separate company to like a to, third party yeah yeah i mean sometimes we could we we, we get like secure couriers to, okay, to yeah. send stuff sometimes if, yeah. if needed but a lot of time we're sort of traveling back with the data so it's, okay I think personally, I think it's safer with, okay, with yeah. the crew because okay. they they know how sensitive it is and, yeah, and sure, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah.
Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's probably yeah. the worst thing. I don't know. Apart from, I mean, there's, you know, when we're on set and it's not, you know, I'm not saying it's, uh, mm. it happens or anything like that, mm. but, and they're all, we have all these risk assessments done by the health and safety teams and stuff yeah. like that, but there's always risk of injury, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes working from height, heavy yeah. machinery and stuff like that. I guess that would be, that'd be one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think only luckily only one project that I've worked on had somebody who got hurt, All right. and they ended up being okay. But mm -hmm. you know, that's pretty yeah. good hit rate when you think yeah, about sure, yeah. like all the projects that I've worked on and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Any any advice for anyone looking to follow your footsteps? Uh, don't. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I'd say I'd say yeah. Try to go for it. Like if you if if it's something that you think interest you and, mm -hmm. and and you like living out of a suitcase sometimes mm. and, and stuff like that then yeah then, then go for it um mm -hmm. it's really it is it, it can be really really good oh, yeah. um mm -hmm. the advice i would say is watch you know read some stuff online watch some videos there's like mm -hmm. tons of resources out there like sometimes i think like did we waste three years at uni kofi mm. you know yeah, exactly, i know yeah. i know i know having that sort of degree gets you your foot in the door because people mm -hmm. are like always oh, taking it seriously right he's not just yeah. watching stuff on youtube but like yeah. there's so much resource out there yeah, now definitely, whether that's yeah. on youtube or actually like paid mm -hmm. for courses yeah. and stuff it's crazy mm -hmm. um so maybe do something like that you know look around see whether there's some courses um yeah. i think there's a company called cave um, okay. i've been seeing lots of stuff in cave mm -hmm. on, uh, on, on linkedin that they've been doing some on sort of on set okay. courses and stuff which look mm -hmm. pretty cool um yeah get hands on with the camera i mean the industry standard at least in the uk is is canon so as long as you're sort of comfortable with canon systems yeah. that's always handy um i know some people use um nikon lots of people in the states use nikon actually i don't know why um yeah get hands on with with that kind of stuff like go out and like shoot some stuff you don't necessarily need to like do like a whole shoot you don't need mm -hmm. like a red and like yeah. chrome balls and everything yeah. and hdri but like go out and like shoot stuff you can mm -hmm. download i'm pretty sure mesh room mm -hmm. which is a photogrammetry software is it's open source i think you can just download you it um or get something like um agisoft metashape which i think is like 140 dollars if mm -hmm. you can afford that get that and go and shoot some photogrammetry process it fly around it have a look you know yeah just practice 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 it's quite a hard from what I understand, it's quite a hard thing to get into freelance side. <clears throat> you know, you, again, you kind of have to know somebody because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's not like you can just go to uh, yeah a recruiter, um, Pinewood, yeah, and just be yeah. like, here's my CV, can I mm. work on a movie, please? You yeah. know, it's not really how it works. Where mm -hmm. <clears throat> obviously, a vendor, you can come in, you can go on a website, or you know, when we're all back at work you probably come in with a CV as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, 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 how that works nowadays. They'll probably mm -hmm. just tell you to apply online. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just keep your, keep your ear to the ground and, and yeah, and, and, and apply. Mm -hmm. um, I think personally, and this is just biased, mm -hmm. my side, I think it's working for a vendor gives you a really good, like base knowledge of stuff. Yeah. Um, and you learn, from people who are going to pick, be picking up your data mm -hmm. right freelance side not necessarily it happens all the time you'll meet people from the vendor they'll come on set mm -hmm. be that cg supervisor or data capture or whatever and they'll be able to tell you stuff and i'm sure there's plenty of people there are plenty of people yeah. um freelancers who, who who know what they're talking about mm -hmm. and, you know know what they're doing but just having that definite education kind mm -hmm. of from a vendor side i think is really important mm -hmm. And then what you do after that is is kind of up to you. Um, I've obviously found success staying at vendor side. Yeah. Some people do, some people don't. Some people move move on, you know, and 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 everybody's successful in their own way, yeah. really. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's kind of what I'd suggest. Mm. Probably, yeah, you know, look 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 vendor side. Yeah. First, you know, if you mm. want to get on set, mm. rather than like having to find somebody that you a family member who might know somebody else is. Yeah. cousin who may be working on set you know yeah. you're better off um pretty looking vendor side yeah sure yeah nice yeah amazing man yeah just amazing. reach out like just yeah. also, also just reach out like i'm on linkedin yeah and stuff i don't i don't check it that often because mm. i'm sure lots of people you know maybe people watch this and be like i messaged you on linkedin it took you a month <laughs> to respond but yeah. i will respond yeah yeah no i mean it, and that's, that's the main thing yeah that's something i'm quite keen on on passing on because it's so easy just for you to like reach out and then just 
either just just having someone to look at your work and just getting feedback or just yeah just or even yeah just finding someone to be a mentor for you but yeah, yeah for sure like i'm more than happy to to help yeah. people like you know i had mm. like you know like i said i had mr elder help me mm. out yeah and you know I, I like to think i've helped some people out mm. along the years and i i want to continue to do that yeah you've got to like feed back to the universe man you need yeah, to give back to the universe a little yeah, bit that's it. yeah you know i feel like i feel like i've been given so much that i want to give something back mm. yeah amazing mm.